This is what the JavaScript and in this video I'll walk you through the project setup and we'll be doing a basic GraphQL query call using a simple fetch. So let's get started. Uh, first of all I'm going to create a directory here. I'll call it code and we'll put all the source code inside this directory. Uh, to generate our project I'm going to use create react app. So I'm just going to cd into this code directory and do npx create react app dot you can find the create react app documentation on the github repository i'll link everything in the description so you can follow along besides the project setup we'll also install prettier which will format our code for us but this makes it really easy when building something so i'm going to add prettier as a dev dependency so i'm going to do yarn add hyphen d prettier and this should install prettier for us we'll also need a couple of things uh, to make prettier work for us i'm going to add certain settings for prettier so for this you can just move to the root of the repository and create a file called settings.json inside a .vs code directory and here i'm going to paste in my settings so this will tell the editor to format the files as we are saving them so that we don't have to worry about formatting at all. Also, we'll need a prettier RC file. So I'm going to just copy my settings and go into my code directory and create a new file dot prettier. Oops, prettier RC dot JS. And I'm going to paste it here. Cool. So now that this is done, I'm going to just start the project. So for that, run yarn start and this should start our project in the browser. Cool, the project is starting up and while this is done, doing, uh, I'm just going to go up and clean some files here that we will not be needing. So index.js, it's rendering a app component but we don't need the styles for now so i'm just going to get rid of them from here and i'll also get rid of the css file now moving to our app.js i'm just going to close this terminal for now and app.js is also importing app.css logo.svg we won't be needing this so i'm going to just get rid of that get rid of this header and just render hello from wtjs i'll get rid of this class name we wouldn't be needing that and hit save cool so things are looking good and i'll also get rid of this app.css file because we will not be needing that cool this is done for styling our app we'll be using style components so let's install those and I'm going to open up my terminal. I'll open up a fresh terminal cd into the code directory where we have our entire code and add the dependency. So yarn add style components. They should install our style components for us. Cool, we're done. And I'm just going to import the style components macro. So you do the import style component slash macro and this will help us to use the CSS prop in create react app without modifying the Babel configuration. So we can quickly test things out. So I'm just going to close this terminal, hit save and things are looking good in a wrap. So let's just see if the styles are working. So CSS color red, hit save cool styles are working and let's just add some global styles to our app to give it a good feel so for i'll just go into the style components documentation and just look for global styles so we'll be using create global style and this will help us to create a component that we can use in our app to give it a global styling so i'm just going to import from style components and I'll just import the create global style and 
I already have a component with myself so I'm just going to paste that in and here I have the global component it will provide some styles to the body and to all the elements so the way to use that is that uh, you ins uh, use that as a regular component in your render function so I'm just going to wrap everything inside a react fragment and you can even get rid of this fragment keyword and here I'm just going to use the global component hit save and let's look into the application and we have our global styles working cool so next let's create a component that we'll be using in a wrap we'll create a simple button component I'm going to create here button.js and I'm just going to paste in some styles that I have with myself paste that in cool next we'll be creating a login component so that we can insert our github token so for that i'm just going to create a file here called login.js inside src and let's just paste in some styles since we'll be creating a github activity feed we'll use the login component to insert a github access token and use that in further api calls I've added the login component and in order to see this I'll just go into my app import this import login from login and I'll just render it here login inside the render function I'll get rid of this line hit save and yeah so our login component is working but we haven't wired this in so I'll go back into my login component and here uh, I have the entire section added some styles and this is rendering a form component inside this form I'm rendering just some heading and an input with a button so this button will help us to submit the uh, submit the form so for that we'll just have to get some value in our input so for this I'm going to use use state hook uh, I'll just import it from react used it and here I'm just going to say const token comma set token is equal to use state and I'll just pass in an empty string now in order to use this I'll just go into my input pass a value of token and in our on change I'll just say set token E dot target dot value so this should set the value here so if I go into my login now I can type it I can type it in and yeah this is working cool so our hook is working now we just need to save this value in our local storage that so that the user can even after reloading a page get access to the app so for that we'll just go into our form submission and here I'll just say local storage dot set item and I'll just set a token value with the token that we have from here and after that's done we can just reload the app window so I'll just go and say window dot location dot reload give this a save and this should work so I'll just type something in my github token give it a submit and yeah so this thing is working uh, you'll have to paste your github token here and uh, remember guys uh, be careful not to push your good github token in your project repo because it's very important for security that you do not push your good github token to your project repos so I'll just go here and next we can just go in our app component and get the value of this token from here so I'm going to fetch the token from local storage so let's say const access token uh, is equal to local storage dot get item and we saved it as token I'm just going to fetch it from here and in our component app component we'll just render this login form conditionally based on the access token if it's available or not so here I'll just say 
if the access token is present we are going to render our app and if it's not present we'll just render our login so i'll just move it here give this a save and our app is getting rendered now we can also render a simple logout button here instead of this app so let me just change it to button and here i'll just say logout and on click of this button we can just write a function and let's say uh, we, we can just do local storage dot clear which will clear everything from the local storage including the token and then we can just reload the window to reflect the changes so window dot location dot reload and this should fire up our logout button so we have a logout button here so i'll just click logout and i get logged out so here i'm just going to paste in my github token that i generated earlier submit and i'm logged in you can also get your own github access token by checking out the documentation on authenticating with graphql you have to add some rules when creating a token and this docs will guide you regarding that you'll find all the uh, uh, information in the description and here i'm just going to use this token to make a simple graphql query so i've opened up the github graphql explorer where i have a simple graphql query running here which just fetches the viewers and inside the viewer i am just fetching the name so here it should fetch my name but let's uh, get this query working in our application so for this i'm just going to make a fetch call using this access token let's look into the docs and here i have the graphql docs for github uh, i have to send a request to api.github.com slash graphql and format the query like this cool so let's try to do this i'm just going to create a fetch and the url will be https api.github.com slash graphql and the method of this call is post because we are sending some data so post and we'll also need some headers to authenticate this call so i'll just pass in headers authorization and we need a bearer with the access token cool now in the body we'll pass the graphql query so i'll just say body is json.stringify here i'll just give the key as query and now we can pass a graphql query here so i just go back into the explorer copy this query paste that in here and after that let's take this response and json transform it and using this json i'll just log it into the console cool so let's look uh, let's look at our application and cool so here we've got our data and inside the data i'm getting the viewer and the name so this is how you use a graphql query using a simple fetch call in the next video we'll be using apollo to simplify this process so that you can know how to use that in a production application and if you're enjoying the series don't forget to subscribe let us know your feedback and stay tuned for the next video see you